The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. This podcast is proudly brought to you by Franklin Templeton. At Franklin Templeton, we value the power of partnership and offer our clients a gateway to investment excellence. We bring together leading investment managers with specialized capabilities, providing investors access to a broad range of fixed income, equity, alternatives, and multi-asset strategies through one trusted global partner. Above all else, we always stay true to our commitment to create better financial futures together. Connect with us today at franklintempleton.com.au. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I've got the pleasure of speaking with Nicole Gardner, Stella Wealth Advisory. Uh, thank you for joining me today. And on pretty short notice, I kind of I messaged you on Instagram of all places like uh, yesterday on the train <laughs> on the way home and you are, and it works. So Nicole, thank you for, for joining me. Great to have a chat with you today. Yeah, my pleasure, James. Thanks for asking me. And yeah, yeah really excited to be on the podcast. Thank you. It'd be, be great to to share your story and and kind of I know you uh, from from your Instagram and, and, and TikTok. And you got the handle the real money mama on those two uh great on those you. two places. Um so if anyone's not following you on either of those two, please do so after you've listened to the podcast. But Stella Stella Wealth. So so tell us about Stella. Wealth. Have you, you you haven't always owned your own business? Well, yeah, it's it's your own business. You have tell, tell us about the business. Yeah, so Stellar Wealth is my business. Uh, yeah. Started in October 2023, so still fairly new in our first six months of business. Yeah, right, brand new, brand new. Yeah, right, brand new. Yeah. yeah. Prior to that, I was an employed advisor for a few years, um, mm. professional year, and so on. But yeah, just starting my own business felt like the right thing to do. I think there's some great opportunities at the moment, and Actually, felt like more of a risk to not do it. Yeah, right. Than to do it. So. It's interesting that, that you know I get a, lot, a chance to speak to a whole lot of people doing this podcast, and there's a lot of people trying to you know thinking of going back the other way. They've done their own thing for a period of time, and and they're you know, selling their business, merging their business in whatever it is, in to go into mm-hmm. something kind of bigger, and going back to being the employ employee. What mm-hmm. where were you where were you working prior to, to doing your own thing? I work for a number of different firms uh, in Melbourne because I'm originally from, actually, I'm originally from WA, uh, did my study, uh, my bachelor's degree, and my started my professional year with uh, Tribeca down in Melbourne. Oh, yeah. And then worked for a couple of firms uh, here in Brisbane. Yep. And, yeah, look, I, I guess being an employed advisor was great. There was nothing really bad about it. But when I just sort of thought about the future, I didn't feel overly excited or inspired about what the future held. I I kind of wanted more of a challenge for myself. And I've always been really independent. I've always liked to do my own thing. I've always been really confident in my own abilities to, to achieve what I want to achieve. So Yep. Yeah, my husband was on board. He said, "Yeah, absolutely, go for it." It's like, yeah. <laughs> so is it the whole family? Because you, like you, you know, you've, I've seen from your social media, you've got a couple of, you've got three kids, I think, from 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 Instagram as well. You all moved from Melbourne up to Brisbane. We did at the end of yeah. lockdowns. Uh, we'd had enough. Oh, you're uh, one of those that escaped. We were one after of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, being at home with three kids, and I'm trying to do meetings online, and my husband's trying to do his work meetings online, and. Of course, kids couldn't go to school. They're doing, you know, online learning. So there was a yeah. lot of noise. And I look at we toyed with the idea of moving up to Brisbane a few times, but never really seriously. And then at yeah. the end of the lockdowns, um, we went from thinking, "Oh, let's just, you know, have a look at some houses and scrolling realestate.com. and then before you know it, we bought something and we're moving up here. So yeah, yeah. It happened pretty Good quickly. On, it, yeah. it sounds like you want to just. You kind of just give it a crack, just 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 go and, and and do it and have a go at it. Yeah, I'm very optimistic. You know, my biases. I've always kind of had a go at things, and that's always worked out well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm interested to hear kind of what what went into your planning around going out and, and doing your own thing because I uh, I suspect there's a lot of people like you that are employees in maybe very great businesses and they're enjoying what they're doing but there's a bit of a you know, an itch, a niggle to say, oh, well, maybe I could do it better, maybe I could do it on my terms, maybe I could move to a completely different state and do it, do it. <laughs> like, like what, uh, you know, what was going through your mind? Like, did, did you do any planning of like, you know, before you set off and did it yourself? Uh, a little bit, probably not as much as I should have. I spent yeah. a bit of time looking at set up costs and, you know, what I'd be up for for, you know, websites and, you know, renting office space and um, yeah. insurances and those kind of things. I spent a bit of time speaking to a number of different licensees, trying to work out uh, who would be a good fit for me. And um, yeah, I, I landed on uh, FYG, who I had worked with previously. And um, yeah, right, that that was really all the the research and planning that I did. <laughs> to be honest, it's a bit of bit of bit of savings in the bank to pay for some rent and a website and uh and and then there's a licensee licensee cost i've got no idea what whatever licensee it costs i mean i i guess you know you have to be in a financial position to go without the income as well um mm. and you know planning for that and what is that going to look like and mm. um you know just weighed it all up and thought no i think i'm in a good spot here and i think that i really need to have a go at this and i'll yeah forever regret it if I don't. And, yeah. you know, if in two years' time I look at the books and I've not uh, made a profit at all and it, things are going terribly, which I don't think that will happen, but I can always go back to being an employed advisor in some capacity, I'm sure. So, yeah, um, yeah. It's, sure. yeah it's a risk I was happy to take. Yeah. What's the – like the, the meeting with the licensees – Part because there's a lot of different mm. and, and a di- different lots of different groups out there that are providing that that kind of service. What are those interviews like? Like what what do you what what are you looking for in a in a licensee if you're meeting with a whole bunch of different groups to to try and work out where you might land? It's a combination of the cost as well as and, and like how they structure how they structure that as yeah. well as the support that they provide and the I guess, you know, software that sometimes is included that they sort of provide with you. So, um, yeah, and aside from that, then it's also just the interpersonal connection, I guess, and and who do I feel most comfortable with? Who do I feel is going to really back me? Who do I feel, I, I don't know, I, it's a combination of the, the logic around the, yeah. the cost and the service and what am I actually going to get combined with that gut feel of who do I like at the end of the day. Yeah, fair enough. And how's the how the six months or so that you're in going going for you? Now, you know, you don't disclose financials, but like I'm sure you had a a plan of I'm hoping to achieve this, that, and the other thing in the first few months. Like, how were you going towards achieving achieving yeah, that? Yeah, well, so I guess a couple of things that I didn't account for were okay. So first of all, the time it takes to get a website designed and set up. To me, that is really key for an online presence and for credibility. And I didn't realize the amount of work and time that would go into that. So that was a little bit, um, I had to learn to be very patient (laughs) while that was being created. And I guess the other thing that I've realized is having a website is great, but if no one sees it, it's kind of pointless and things like, SEO, which I really don't know a lot about, but I'm learning about, it does take quite a long time for that organic growth to kick in and for Google to want to, you know, push you out. And then, and then there's also the, you know, the cost of Google ads and, um, and that sort of thing. So initially I thought, well, let's just go hard on, on that and surely Mm. that will generate some leads, but financial advice is a very competitive space and being a smaller you know, solo operator, I very quickly realised that perhaps I can't compete with some <laughs> of the larger firms when it comes to Google Ads and landing on that first page and so on. So yeah. I very quickly um, thought, well, what else can I do in terms of lead generation? And of course, I'm, 
you know, networking with other professionals in the area and you know, meeting with accountants and lawyers and that type of thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, social media to me was, um, yeah, the the big opportunity, mm. and yeah, has has proved to be quite. Uh, successful in generating leads, which is great. You, you, I was looking at your website before. It's a, it's a great website. Um, Thank you. And it, it looks great. It you know, clearly shows a lot of, a lot of work and, and effort's gone into it. It's not just slapped together and, and it's a fault from 1980 on there, on there. It's uh, there's a, there's a lot to it. So, I'm sure, it cost you a bit, and also, uh, and also a bit of time went into, into doing that. So, how do you is the does the social media type of stuff does that does that come naturally to you? Is it is it like do you have to kind of force yourself to do it? How do you find how do you find it? Because you've built you know quite a following on TikTok in particular, and twenty five thousand odd followers on there, and um, lots and lots of likes on your videos, and and so you know, you're really doing well in that front. But does it come naturally to you? I think it does. Um, I've always had a lot to say, yeah. <laughs> and my husband says to me, you know, how do you how do you come up with the ideas of, of what you want to talk about? And I mean, I just have this endless reel of ideas in my head. It's it's more about just picking what I think is going to be most of value and um, provide the most value to the people who are watching. Yeah. Um, does it come naturally? I, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if being on video and listening to your own voice comes naturally to anyone. I sort of watch them back and have a bit of a cringe, but... Um, I kind of tell myself that, oh, look, no one's probably going to see this video anyway, so just post it because no one's going to see it anyway. And then all of a sudden, 1.7 million people have seen it. Then you end up with 1.7 million watching your tax video and uh, <laughs> and, and it blows up your page. So do you, you, you're actually noticing you know, uh, some inquiry, you know, new client inquiries, whatever you want to call it, coming off the back of what you're doing online? I am. So yeah, fantastic. Um, the way my website is set up, is people can book in for an intro call uh, directly through the website. And I guess prior to doing the TikToks, I maybe had a bit of a, I maybe kind of judged the the type of, the, or the quality of leads that you might get from social media. I had a predetermined idea in my head that they would maybe not be good quality leads. Mm. And what I've actually found is, um, yeah, that there, there are definitely a lot of people out there who are, really in need of advice and and what you would deem as good clients. And, you know, they've watched some of your videos. I guess they feel that they get to know you a little bit. They they like you, they trust you, and then they absolutely want to engage. And when you have those initial conversations and those initial meetings, they they're sort of already on board because yeah. they've they've watched you a fair bit. I mean, you'd know you'd know about this mm. yourself with your own TikTok. Mm. Yeah, it does. It happens a lot. Yeah, you kind of get, you know, someone came in the other day and he was talking about something. And I'm like, why are you even talk- why? Like, why are you talking about that? I was just like, it was a, it was just a strange line of conversation for a new client to take the conversation down. And he goes, oh yeah, I watched a video on that thing. I'm like, ah, oh, that's why you're talking about this. It was it, it was uh, yeah, they they're kind of halfway to becoming clients or three quarters of the way to becoming clients before uh, before they even talk to you, aren't they? So um, yeah, that, it's really powerful. Right. It is. And I think the other thing is too, I'm fully aware that there's going to be people who watch my videos and they don't like me. They don't like my voice. They don't like my hair. They disagree. And that's fine because if they go through the process and come to me for you know an initial meeting, well, they're not going to like me at that point either. So that it has that ability to attract and repel, and yeah, it kind of um, helps, I guess, qualify your people and and the clients for you. So, yeah. So who yeah. Are, who are the clients that you're typically trying to work with? Like what are, what are they what do they look like? Yeah. So there's really two groups. I think um, for people, pre-retirees and retirees, there is just such a large volume of people in that space who need advice. We can provide a lot of value and there's a lot we can do for them. So I really like helping people in that space as well as ambitious working people. Um, I see a lot of, I've had a lot of clients in their forties who maybe have been earning you know, reasonable incomes, paid off the home loan, maybe they have an investment property and they want to know, well, what do we do from here? So yeah. if they are ambitious and they want to take next steps, um, I love helping them too because, again, there is so much value that we can add and yeah. um, so much we can do for them. 
Yeah. And so, and what does your engagement look like with them? Like, can you talk through the meetings that you use? Is there particular tools that you use with them? Like, yeah, yeah. What are your, what are your tricks? What are your secrets? And I don't have any tricks or secrets. <laughs> it's all pretty standard stuff. <laughs> um, look, a lot of the clients that I've been getting are from all around Australia. Um, yeah. Okay. You know, so they book in for the initial chat. I give them a call. We have a bit of a chat about what's on their mind and and where they're at. Um, and then if that's all um, you know, good, and then they they want to go the next step. We have a discovery meeting, which is usually one hour ish um, yep. over teams. I send them the link, they join. I've got a bit of a PowerPoint presentation that I go through to help them understand a bit about the advice process, how Stellar Wealth works, what I do, and then yeah, we 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 knuckle down and spend a bit of time that discovery meeting talking about goals are. What I find really interesting around goals is. Um, a lot of clients will tell me their goal is to buy an investment property or their goal is to start an investment portfolio. And so helping them understand that from my point of view, that's not a goal, that's a strategy or an action. And the goal is the life that you'll have as a result of those actions and strategies. So helping them see that quite often is a light bulb moment for them where they're like, oh, okay, yes. After the discovery meeting, um, send them an engagement letter through DocuSign, Hopefully they sign that one and then we get into the uh, research strategy. They send me through all their documents. Uh, once I've got that and we've done you know, risk profile questionnaires and uh, any insurance pre-assessment questionnaires that might be required, then I, I do the SOAs myself. We've previously done para planning. So at this, yeah. at this point in time, yes, I'm still writing SOAs myself. Yeah. Um, but look, I'm hoping that by the end of this year, I will be able to put on an associate um, an associate team member to help me with that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Then we sign up, we implement. One thing that I do do that I think is a little bit different, rather than provide, I guess, upfront advice and then proposition and ongoing um, proposal, I combine it all into one. Okay. So for me, I really want, I only want to work with clients who want to want advice for the long term. So I want them to come on board as long-term clients. And we start that by having that initial advice, but including the 12 months um, ongoing as well. So we can review the plan and hopefully at the end of the 12 months, they've seen the value of the plan and the advice. They can see that it's starting to work. Yeah. And then from that point, if I want to re-engage, yeah. yeah. How do you, do you, do you bring that up with them? Like where in your process do you bring that up with them? Because I find a lot you know, from the like the you know, social media inquiries and all the rest of it, the phone calls and that kind of thing that you do, I find a lot of the time I'm getting people that just just want some one-off advice, and that that may all be well and good, but tomorrow morning something's changed in your life. Like, where in your process mm-hmm. are you explaining to clients that you really only want to work with people that are going to engage on a on a longer term basis with you? I do touch on it in that introductory call. Yeah. But I guess it's really in the discovery meeting where I can embellish on the reasons for that a little bit yes. more and um, hopefully they understand that and they're on board. Yeah. 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 Do you do any modelling with them in, in any of those earlier meetings or you kind of leave all of that to the to the advice presentation? How are you, how are you dealing with it there? No, look, sometimes I might offer like a, a draft strategy meeting where I can show them a couple of different uh, outcomes that the modelling um is showing and and it, I don't know help them see the different options rather than just telling them this is what I think is best for you. Mm. I like to give them the different options, help educate them along the way because I don't want there to be any huge surprises. Yeah. Um, so yeah, without obviously giving them advice, just wanting to show them because sometimes when I'm explaining to clients the modelling and how it can help them make informed decisions about the different paths they can take. It's really hard for them to picture, but when you can actually put those um, charts up in front of them, they're like, oh, okay, now I get it. And I can see the value of that strategy that I wasn't maybe sure of, but if that's going to be the outcome, then let's talk about it. So yeah, yeah, not always, but sometimes. Hmm. And do you, the, the order in which you present your advice to, to clients, do you, like I'm just trying to think about the way that I do it, and, and I think I need to switch it around the way that I do it myself. Which is, tends to be, these are all the strategies, and this is all fantastic. And then there's this project, like what does this all mean? Then there's a kind of a projection at the end, and 
And like I just presented one yesterday that it was like this, it was amazing. there's all this stuff going on and there's all this complicated strategy and it's all sounded great. But then the, the bit of what they wanted to know is what is this actually going to mean? And what is it going to look like for me? And I've spent like 45 minutes, they're probably you know, dead tired by the end of it until I get to the projection. Like, which order do you do you do that in when you're presenting advice to a client? It's a good question. Well, I similar to you, I sort of run through the strategies and the reasons yeah. for and and you know any potential risks with each strategy, and then yeah, projections kind of towards the end. Yeah, um, I always have a I guess a base or a current or a you know if you do nothing, this is what it's potentially going to look like versus taking our advice. And, yeah, it's a good one. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. And are you doing the like the the video SOA model that some some businesses have worked to, or you? You know, you, you've got a written version of what, what's your take on advice? Yeah, look, I think the ideas around video SOAs are great. I haven't tackled that myself. Yeah. Um, I would like to learn more about it, but at this point in time, I am still producing you know, written SOAs, um, which I guess because it's what I know, it's what I'm familiar yeah. with, and I know I can do that quickly. And when you're starting a new business, it's really important to spend your time, and that's one thing I'm learning is there is so much to do and I need to make sure I'm spending my time in the right areas. So it's definitely something on my radar and definitely something because I am I love um, new ways of doing things, better ways of doing things, efficiencies, mm. you know, utilising technology to make that process not simpler for us but to more value for our clients. Yep. Um, so it's definitely on my radar but I haven't um, scratched that. One yet. Yeah, yeah, like we we it's it's a big pro, it's a big project. We're doing it. Oh, we're kind of we're doing it now. But what started out as a a reasonably short document has very quickly become a much longer document. It, the, the particular document that's being produced in the power planning team is a whole lot um whole lot uh, faster for them to do. But then okay. but then the meetings are a bit different. Yeah. yeah. Is, so just you at, at the moment in in the business you. Yep, You're doing me. everything. Yeah. I'm doing everything. And yeah. look that I guess that's one of the great things about my journey through advice is, you know, I've done the, you know, the um, client services officer, I've done the associate. And what I think is great about the fact that we've now become a profession and the you know, it's so much harder for people to become advisors nowadays, the increased education requirements, the professional year, the exam. I really do feel that after doing all of those things, I'm very ready. I don't, like, I chose to do the master's degree as well just to make sure I did, mm -hmm. you know, know everything to dot the I's and cross the T's. And, it, you know, experience is valuable as well. But I, I really just think that, you know, having gone through that, I'm such a better advisor for it. And, um, yeah, I'm a real, um, I guess, cheerleader for <laughs> <laughs> advice as a profession and the new education requirements. Yeah. Yeah. What about plans and goals for the you know the next six months, twelve months? What have you got? You mentioned you're hoping to try and you know, get some help, but you know maybe later in the year. But what else have you got on your on your to do list or your plans? What, what are you going to What are you up to? Uh, you mean personally or? Oh, just in the business. In your business. Oh, in the business. Yeah. Um. Uh. Well, I'd like to. I guess at this point in time, my data around uh, knowing myself, my you know conversion rate and my average client fee, but the data around leads and um, your quality of leads coming to me, that's still quite low. I've only had a few months worth of that data, so it does make it hard to sort of plan too far into the future. Yeah. And there's also a bit of a question mark around, um, you know, the new – qualified advisors, although I think they're going to be called something else now and, and yeah. sort of what impact, if any, that might have. So I'm all for a business plan, but um, I guess I'm just being very flexible and very nimble and um, yeah, my plans really just to have an associate at the end of this year, um, moving into some office space, which is very exciting and um are you at home? You're at home at the moment. I'm working from home today. Yeah, yeah. you're uh, yeah. spaces are better. We said before press record. Your space is a bit more professional than mine with the with the bed in the background there. Yeah. I um 
I am doing the aged care qualification in March. Oh, yeah, right. The aged care steps. I think yep. that's important. I'm um, yep. looking forward to that. Louise Biddy, I think, is mm, um, the husband. Louise, yes. And, yeah, really, I'm just enjoying uh, the freedom of, you know, being able to manage my time how I want to. If I want to take the day off to go to the kids' swimming carnival, I can. I don't need to ask anyone's permission. Yeah. Mind you, sometimes I'm still working at 10.30 at night and <laughs> so it's all in balance. The joys of operating a small business, eh? Hey? Yeah. So do you, what, do you, you know, do you have any dreams of, of making this, you know, multiple advisors and, and all the rest of it or do you think you might just, you, you just want to have, you know, your time and your flexibility and, 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 and you know, maybe just yourself as the advisor? No, look, I would love... I would love to be able to have a practice that can foster and grow new advisors. Um, I, yep. it's, it's a, I think it's really competitive at the moment. There's not many advisors really about. Um, so, look, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, yeah, I would love that. I would love to have a team mm. of, you know, four or five advisors and your yep. um, associates. But, you know, one day at a time, one one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah, as you said before, keeping it flexible. Yeah, it's it's good to have the. You know, you know, I said I put to some some people. I say, no, nah, I just want to be me. And I'm yeah, there. There was uh, I had a Jono on the podcast a little while ago, and he was saying, no, nah, I just want to be me. And and then he sent me a message not long afterwards and said, oh, after the podcast, I ended up employing someone, and I've now got another advisor. And and so things change. I think yeah, I think yeah. The important part is that you be flexible, as you're kind of talking about with. Changes that are going to continue to come in financial advice. That's right. Yeah. Well, Nicole, thank you for joining me today. Great to uh, have a chat, get to know you, understand uh, where you're at. If anyone you know, wants to know more or check out your website or anything, where can people find you? To give yourself a bit of a plug. We'll put some links in the in the show notes, but right. Thanks, where can James. people find you? Yep. So you can check out um, the Stella Wealth website. It's www.stellawealth.com.au. It's Stella with an R. And as you said at the start of the podcast, I'm on Instagram and TikTok. Um, the Real Money Mama is my handle, and Stella Wealth has its own Instagram account as well. So, by all means, please give me a follow. Were you doing those couple of pages before you started to do your own business, or or that's all just come about in the last few few months? No, I had started the Instagram oh years ago, but. I wasn't doing any finance related content. It was really just family holiday snaps and whatnot. And yeah, okay. it's only been in the last few months that I've started doing um, the finance content. But I did have that handle for a long time because I envisioned that one day I would have my own business. And Good on you. yeah, I wanted to use that handle. So. Well, great to great to chat with you. I have to have you back on in a year or so and see. Uh, see what you've accomplished in in the year i'll follow along on your tiktok and instagram in the meantime but thanks for thanks for joining me today it's just been great thanks so much james it's been great to chat with you thank you thanks